twice as good with Hadley and Delaney is brought to you by Mila. Emma Besser, forever better. Mila. And by Cuties. Cute, you can eat. Cuties. Kitchen Works. Wherever we go, that's where the party's at. Kitchen Works. four rules of kids cooking. One, wash your hands. Two, ask an adult for help, especially with hot items, sharp utensils, and appliances. Three, don't be afraid to try new ingredients, especially if they are green. And four, have fun. These four rules make cooking twice as healthy and twice as good. Hi, I'm Hadley. And I'm Delaney. And this is Twice as good. good. Today, Hadley and I are super excited to be in Boston, Massachusetts to learn about the science of sugar and the chemistry of baking with the Flour Bakery's owner and pastry chef, Joanne Chang. Miss Joanne is the perfect person from him to learn about the science of sugar and the chemistry of baking. She graduated from Harvard College with a degree in applied mathematics before founding Flour Bakery and so she's naturally interested in the intersection between science and cooking. So the first thing we're gonna make is devil's food chocolate cake. Do you like chocolate? Uh, yes, we do. Excellent. So let me first explain a little bit about all the different ingredients that go into chocolate cake. Because if you think about it, all of baking starts off with butter, sugar, flour, chocolate, all these ingredients, but depending on how you mix them together, you get either a, a cake or a tart or a cookie, all sorts of different things, and it all matters with the chemistry of the baking. So what we have is we have butter, and then we're gonna add some sugar, and then we have flour, and then this is our magic ingredient today. This is baking soda. Baking soda is what's called a base, and what a base does is it reacts to acid. We have a couple acids in this recipe. Brown sugar is an acid, and then over here we have chocolate, which is melted, and then we have creme fraiche, which is sort of like yogurt, and that's also an acid. Now what happens when you mix a base, like baking soda, with acids, like brown sugar, chocolate, and creme fraiche, is that all these bubbles start to form, and the bubbles are what make the cake light and fluffy. Yeah, so we're gonna watch this happen as we mix the cake together. So if you don't have baking soda in this cake, you end up with a really flat, dense cake. It doesn't really taste very good because you don't have any of the chemical reaction between the baking soda and the acids, which makes it nice and light and fluffy. It might sound like it's a dangerous thing, but it's not at all. What it is, it's the pH level of an ingredient. And so if something is really acidic or if something is basic, it means it's different levels of pH. In chemistry, the pH scale allows chemists to categorize acids and bases. Placing acids and bases on a pH scale is a way to show how strong or weak they are. The scale runs from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. Water has a pH of 7. A pH of less than 7 means the solution is acidic. A pH of more than 7 means it's a base. The further away from seven in either direction, the stronger the acid or the base is. When you combine basic things with acidic things, bubbles form. And the bubbles are what cause the cake to rise, and then when you cut into it, it's really light and fluffy. So you wanna first take the butter and put it in the bowl. 
Anyway. Yeah, put the whole thing in. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I want you to put the baking soda and the salt into the flour. You can just dump both of them right in. So the salt's just for flavor, and then the baking soda is what's gonna be the ingredient that reacts with all of the acids. Now take the wooden spoon and mix those ingredients together. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put the brown sugar in here with the butter. We love brown sugar. Brown sugar's delicious. So did you know that brown sugar is just white sugar with a little bit of molasses? mixed into it. It is? Yeah, that's what makes it brown is the molasses. And that's what makes it acidic because molasses is an acid. Now we're gonna go ahead and add all the flour as well. So the flour is gonna be what combines and binds all of the ingredients together. So we're gonna get our mixer going. I'm gonna lock it so that it doesn't fly up. And then first I'm gonna do what's called pulsing. I'm just gonna turn off and on, off and on, off and on. Okay, so now that it's started to be coated in a little bit of the flour, we can turn it on. And now we're gonna mix it until all of the butter, sugar, and flour mix together. So while that's going, we're gonna get the rest of our ingredients together. So we need two eggs, and then we need two egg yolks. Okay. Do you know how to do that? We do. So two eggs. Okay, and then you can add the yolk? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Now we're gonna add the chocolate. Is this melted chocolate this bars? This is or? melted chocolate bars and some water and some cocoa powder. So this is creme fraiche, which is a lot like sour cream or yogurt. And then we're gonna whisk all of that together okay. until okay, it's turns. really well combined. Okay, so it'll be like a chocolatey mixture? Yeah, it's a chocolatey mixture with eggs and the creme fraiche. And see, it gets a little bit creamy looking. That looks beautiful. Look how well combined that is. So now we're gonna finish making the cake batter. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put about half of that chocolate mixture in here with the butter, the and sugar. Yeah. yeah, just about half. What would happen if you put the whole thing in there? If you put the whole thing in, then when we try to combine the butter and the sugar and the flour with the chocolate, it will get all sloshy and it'll have a hard time mixing together. That? Yeah, that's perfect. So we just put in half. And I'm gonna turn that on slowly. And now we're gonna start mixing the two, in, the two groups of ingredients together. And that's when the chemical reaction happens. When you mix an acid and a base together, the chemical reaction that occurs is often referred to as a proton transfer. That's because in chemistry, acids are proton donators and bases are proton acceptors. So now I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit so we can mix it all together. You can see how the batter's coming together really beautifully. And now that it's all mixed in, we can add the rest of the liquid ingredients. All of it? All of it, the whole thing. And now I'm gonna turn it up. I'm gonna turn it all the way up. And now we have... Batter. Beautiful cake batter. I'm gonna put all of that in the cake pan. Now what happens, after we put the batter in the cake pan, we're gonna put the cake batter in a hot oven. The heat of the oven is gonna cause all of those little bubbles that we created with the baking soda, it's gonna cause them all to get a little bit bigger. This looks great. Why don't I scrape the rest of this into the cake pan? Okay. And then we are going to get this cake ready for the oven. So now we're gonna make another cake, but this time we're not gonna put the baking soda in it to see what happens. We're gonna put butter in the bowl. Brown sugar. Brown sugar, exactly the salt into the flour. You wanna go ahead and put that in there. But no baking soda. Remember last time we had baking soda? This time, I'm just gonna mix the salt in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this in here. Then you mix it up and then. And then you mix it. Okay, so while this is mixing, I'm gonna get the eggs ready. So we have two eggs, two egg yolks, the creme fraiche. And chocolate. And the chocolate. So you girls did a great job with that last time, so I'm gonna have you do that this time. Add it in. So remember, all of the ingredients are the same, exactly the same. The only thing we're missing is that itty bitty bit of baking soda. Okay, half of that goes in here. That's good. It's okay. That's perfect. And then we're gonna mix it again. Yep. So you see it still looks the same as the other batter. At this point, you can't really tell. Okay, let's add the rest. 
So the final step is we mix in the last of that. Okay, so now the batter's all come together, but you can see it's a little bit looser too, which is probably also because the chocolate was a little bit warmer. And we're gonna put them in this oven right behind us. The one with, without baking sodas on the left, the one with baking sodas on the right. Close up the oven. How long will this cook? About 35, 40 minutes. Okay. I think our cakes are ready. Oh, these look beautiful. Wow, that one looks so pretty. Isn't that look great? Is that the one with the baking soda? That is the one with the baking soda. And here's the second one. That looks kind of flat. Let's try some of this cake. One of each. So it's a little bit warm, but I think you'll like it. Let's see. Yum, that looks good. It's really good. Is it it's good? kind of like fluffy. Yes, yeah, so it's all this little oh, air bubbles. I feel bad making you eat this, but you need to try it so you can taste the difference. What does it taste like? It doesn't have as many air bubbles. It's not as fluffy. Which one would you rather eat? Probably this one. The one with baking soda. And why? Because it's more fluffy and airy, but this one's more gummy and chewy. That's exactly right. So we learned when we bake a cake with baking soda, we are actually combining light acids and light bases and heating them to speed up their chemical proton transfer reaction, and the resulting solution is a moist, fluffy cake. Now on top of that cake is icing, which is made using sugar. So next up, we're going to learn about the science of sugar. We are going to turn from the chemistry of baking to the science of sugar. What do you think sugar does mostly in a dessert? Does it add sweetness? It makes things sweet, exactly. But it turns out sugar has so many more things that it does other than just adding sweetness. And that is the science of sugar. So the first example we have is sorbet. This is grapefruit sorbet that has no sugar whatsoever. It's just grapefruit juice and water. You tell me what it feels like. Does it feel it's, like sorbet that you want to eat? It's like ice. You, it's couldn't, you probably ice. couldn't eat it. I would want to eat that. This version has one third cup sugar. It's a little bit better, but it's still, still it's kind still of seems hard. pretty hard. So then the next one is made with two thirds cup sugar. So this one seems like it's a little bit softer. Do you want to taste it and see? Sure. sure. So then let's go to this version, which has, here, and I move it up closer to you guys. Oh, that's very soft. How's that? This, this has one good. cup sugar. So then we wanted to see what happens if you add too much sugar. This one has one and a third cup Whoa, sugar. Whoa, it's like soup. It's like soup. It's not even sorbet anymore. So all of that is just by adding sugar to sorbet. So in addition to providing sweetness, a second function of sugar in cooking is to depress freezing points which makes desserts like sorbet more edible. So what I want you girls to do is take some of these beautiful strawberries, and then let's cut the strawberries, let's say, in half. You want to keep your fingers back when you cut. Exactly, you want to keep your fingers back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some sugar to the strawberries. Now sugar's hydroscopic, so it's going to draw out all of the water that's in the strawberries, and then it's going to mix and make its own sauce. Look, it's created a little sauce in the bottom. Wow, look at oh, all wow. of that sauce. That's all from the sugar drawing out the moisture that's in the strawberries. It must be really sweet. Now another magical thing that sugar does is it strengthens egg white foams. So let me explain what that means. We have some egg whites here. I'm gonna put a little bit of egg white into the mixer. Are we making meringue? We're gonna start making meringue, exactly. But what I first wanna do is show you what happens when you don't put any sugar in the meringue. So see how it's all yellowy? Okay. All right. I'm gonna turn it on. And slowly, as the whisk is whipping up the egg whites, it's adding air to the egg. And it's creating what we call egg white foam. It kind of looks like styrofoam. You're right, it's getting all fluffy. And now this is just egg white whipped up and made into an egg white foam. These egg whites are actually made up of protein strands, and the protein strands get all stretched out when we whip them, and they hold all of this air. So without sugar, you see that it's kind of fluffy. Now we're gonna make exactly the same thing, but we're gonna add sugar. We're gonna add some egg whites. Okay, 
Now you can start adding it, but just add it little by little. What would happen if you added it all in one? So if you add it all at once, it's not bad, but it has to mix a lot longer because you're adding it too fast, and then the sugar takes a longer time to mix into the egg whites. Look how beautiful that is. This is like a soft meringue, but you can see it's so much more glossy. So that's the difference adding sugar, is that it makes it glossy and it holds the air better versus this one, which doesn't have sugar. So I have another thing to show you uh, that sugar does in baking. So I'm gonna bring these two cakes over if you wanna get all that other stuff out of the way. Okay. So when you mix sugar and butter together, what happens is what's called creaming. So that's the first step in making a cake. So I made two cakes. This one was made by creaming the butter and sugar. See how soft it is? Yeah. It's nice and fluffy. This one is melted, and I don't know if you can see the difference, but can you see how it's a little bit denser? Oh, it's, it's harder. Really damp. It's, it's harder and it's damp because it doesn't have as many air bubbles. This and this one's fluffy. lighter and fluffier. Does it taste different? Well, let's find out. This one's really good. It's a lot more, more chewy. It's like gummy. Sugar crystals also have sharp edges, so during the creaming process, they create air pockets and help make the cakes more fluffy. So we've learned that sugar has many roles in baking in addition to providing sweetness. It also depresses freezing points, attracts water, strengthens structures, and creates air pockets. Now that we've covered sugar's scientific roles, we're focusing on how sugar changes phases at different temperatures, and how these stages create opportunities for terrifically sweet desserts. So when you mix sugar and water together, and then when you heat it up, it goes through different phases. First, there's what's called thread phase, and what that means is that when you heat up sugar and water, and then you take the mixture and you put it in some cold water, you get a thread of sugar. So that's why it's called thread stage. Now you use that to do things like sweetened iced tea. So the next stage after thread stage is what's called soft ball stage. And what that means is when you take the sugar syrup and you put it in some cold ice water, it turns into a soft ball. And you use that to make things like fudge. Then when you heat up the sugar even more, it goes into what's called firm ball stage. When you take that sugar syrup and you put it in some ice water, it turns into a firm little ball, and that's what makes something like a caramel candy. So then you take the sugar even further, and it goes into hard ball stage, and that's when you take some of the sugar syrup, you put it in some ice water, and it turns into a hard ball, and you use that to make marshmallows. So the other stages of sugar and the other phases are after hard ball, after firm ball, then you go to what's called soft crack. And then it means when you take the syrup and you put it in some ice water, it actually starts to crack. It becomes almost crunchy and crispy-like. So after soft crack, then comes hard crack. And that's when you take the sugar syrup and you put it in some cold ice water and it turns really hard. And that makes things like lollipops. Now you take the sugar even further and it starts to turn brown and then it goes into caramelization. And then you can make all sorts of things with caramelized sugar. Can you make pralines? Exactly, so we're gonna make some pralines with some caramelized sugar. We're gonna take sugar through all the different phases that we just talked about, all the way to caramel, and then we're gonna add some nuts to it and that's gonna make praline. The first part of the praline, we're just gonna put some sugar here in a pot. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. And you can see that the sugar is now mixing in with the water. And now as it slowly comes to temperature and as the water starts to boil, we're gonna see all the different phases. How do you know which stage it's at? So the easiest way to tell what stage it's at is to use a thermometer. You just stick a candy thermometer in there and you watch it as it goes through all the different temperature stages. So we're gonna let it go just a little bit darker. I'm just gonna throw some almonds in here. So it's at caramelization? Now it's at caramelization, exactly. And now I'm gonna swirl it and swirl it and coat all of those almonds. That looks really good. Doesn't that look good? Okay, and now I'm gonna pour it out onto this baking tray. You're gonna be really careful because it's really hot. That looks really good. 
Let me just spread this out a little bit. That looks so good. Doesn't that look good? Yes, it does look good. So it's too hot to eat right now. We definitely can't eat it right now. It's gonna become really hard, and then we're gonna pop it out of the pan, and then we're gonna eat it. Now we have our praline. I think our praline's ready. We could already eat these pieces. There you go. Oh, whoa. So when you eat some with the nuts in it. Mmm. Mm-hmm, it's really good. <laughs> So we're waiting for the sugar to caramelize. We're gonna bring it all the way up to the point where it turns golden brown again. But this time, we're not gonna put almonds in it. We're not gonna make praline. Instead, we're gonna make what's called spun sugar, which is really fun. I'm really excited to show you guys. So let me turn off the stove. So now it's still too hot, so we have to wait for it. It's already caramelized, but now we're gonna wait until it cools down a little bit. And as it cools down, it's gonna get thicker and then we're gonna use it to make the spun sugar. Now you can see it's starting to cool. Do you see that thread? Does that can look you like touch a, it? Looks like a spun, yeah, you can touch that part. Whoa. Whoa. This is what we're yeah, look at that. And now it's all hard, because it's totally cool. How did you make the puffs? So the puffs are called pat a choux. It's a batter that you make by mixing butter and flour and water together in a pot, just like this. And then when you mix it all together, you put it in a mixer, and then you add eggs and then you scoop out the batter and bake it and you get these puffs. So, okay, so watch me carefully. I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna flick it over this thing, okay? I'm gonna go back and forth so I don't hit either you or me. You wanna try? Sure. Okay, so you wanna be really careful because it's really hot. Nice, look at that. How many times have you done this? Oh my gosh, I can't even count. I've probably done this hundreds of times. So you just keep doing that over and over and over again until you have the whole thing covered in sugar. You girls did a lovely job. It's all covered in sponge sugar. But I have other cakes that I baked, and we're gonna actually frost them. And we're gonna make buttercream using all of the things we learned about the stages of sugar. And we're gonna frost this cake, which is made with baking soda, with the buttercream that we're gonna make. So I've got more sugar and more water in the pot, and we're gonna bring it to a boil. So while this is heating up, I'm gonna put egg whites back in our mixer bowl. I'm just gonna cut off the top of this cake. We're not using the top? We're not gonna use the top. This is what you get to snack on when you're making a cake. Doesn't that look good? Yes, it does. There. Can you hear the sugar? Oh, yeah. It's starting to sound different. So what I'm gonna do is test the sugar temperature. I don't have a thermometer, so instead I'm gonna freeze my finger and I'm gonna plunge it into the hot syrup. We shouldn't do this at home. You shouldn't do it at home, you're right. There, and then I put it into here and then look at that. And then I make a little ball. So that tells me that the sugar is ready. So I pour some of the syrup into so now you can see, now you can see that the sugar has made the meringue nice and white and fluffy. Yes. And now we're gonna add some butter to this and make a buttercream that we're gonna use to frost the cake. And you're gonna just throw it in there. Okay girls, look at the buttercream. Can you see how beautiful it is now? Wow. Now it's silky and smooth. So we're gonna do what's called a crumb coat. We're gonna cover the whole cake with a layer of frosting that's just gonna seal in all the crumbs. So once we cover the whole thing with a thin layer of frosting, then we're gonna put the rest of the frosting on top. So it's gonna be like an all white and brown cake? It'll be white on the outside and brown on the inside. We make it um, at the bakery and we call it midnight chocolate cake because it's all dark. Like it's dark outside when it's midnight. And we actually frost it with a chocolate frosting. Are we going to put something on the top? You know what? We have those beautiful strawberries. Are we going to put them on with the stems? You know, it's kind of pretty sometimes with the stems. Do you want to? Sure. sure. That looks nice. And then maybe all around. That's beautiful. It looks really pretty on the outside. It's it like looks a little really egg. pretty. You can put that one on the top? Okay. Maybe like that? Perfect. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Such a wonderful time today. 
We learned so much about the chemistry of baking and the science of sugar. We'd like to thank Miss Joanne for teaching us all about how weak acids mixed with the base create a proton transfer and result in a fluffy cake and for demonstrating to us that sugar has many different roles in addition to just making a dessert sweet. We had a great time seeing how the different phase changes of sugar at different temperatures make it possible to create a bunch of fun, sweet desserts. Today is proof that every time you bake, you're a chemist. And every time you cook, you're practicing science. Cooking and science, now that's twice as good. For more information about the dishes prepared on today's show, including a listing of ingredients and the recipes, please visit us at twiceasgoodshow.com. is Good with Hadley and Delaney is brought to you by Mila. Emma Besser, forever better. Mila. And by Cuties. Cute, you can eat. Cuties. Works. Wherever we go, that's where the party's at. Kitchen Works. <laughs>